Hello, Aluxers. We're so glad you've joined us. Today, we put our best foot forward and we're diving into a shoe brand that has stood the test of time. New Balance has been around since 1906 and was originally called the New Balance Arch Support Company. It was founded by William J. Riley and his initial intention was to give great foot support to people who are on their feet all day. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Let's take a step back in time and find out how chickens influenced one of the biggest shoe brands in the world. Number 1. William J. Riley was an Irish immigrant who settled in Boston. He noticed that chickens running around his backyard managed to stand and strut remarkably well on their three-pronged feet. With this in mind, he designed an arch support with three support points. The name New Balance was also inspired by the chickens and his innovative products allowed wearers a new balance. The New Balance Arch Support Company sold arch supports called New Balance Arch, and in 1927, Riley hired Arthur Hall to go door to door to sell his products. The supports were selling for $5 a pair, which could have bought a brand new pair of shoes. Price wasn't what Riley considered when selling his arch supports. He wanted the wearer to have the utmost comfort and support, and the wearer got what they paid for. His biggest target market at that stage were firefighters and policemen. Arthur Hall became a partner in the company, and he went on to sell the New Balance Arch Support Company to his daughter Eleanor Kidd and her husband in 1956. Number 2. New Balance Survived the Great Depression not many companies can claim to have survived one of the biggest economic tragedies to have ever taken place. But because their arch supports were so solid and there was no compromise on quality, they continued selling throughout those crippling economic times. Number 3. The move from the New Balance Arch Support Company to New Balance was gradual. From its arch support beginnings in 1906, it took over 30 years before the first shoe was produced in 1938. Riley designed the first running shoe worn by Danny McBride, a runner from the Boston Brown Bag Harriers Club. The small team of six continued to make shoes for tennis, boxing, and baseball. Fast forward to 1960, Eleanor and her husband Paul launched the Trackster. This shoe made history as the world's first running shoe with rippled soles for traction. Another first for the sneaker was that it could be ordered in different widths, accommodating athletes with broader feet. Reports suggest that retail stores weren't too keen on selling the shoe because the half-width options made their job a lot more difficult. But it wasn't long before this shoe became the go-to running shoe for cross-country and track by schools and colleges in the Massachusetts area. Number 4. Not all names were a great fit New Balance tested out a few names before settling on the name we know today. Along with the name changes, their logo has also had a few nips and tucks along the way. New Balance Arch Support Company was the initial name of the company. It kept that name until 1956 when it changed over to New Balance Orthopedic Laboratory. It was during this time that the space race was a massive deal and the Cold War was prevalent in America, and they were trying to keep within the scope of the new interest in space. New Balance, as we've come to recognize as the official brand name, didn't come about until the 1970s. The N logo was designed by Terry Heckler. This was the first time the footwear had any official branding. Heckler was advised to drop his signature N because people would confuse New Balance with Nike, but Heckler wasn't phased by that and believed it would bring New Balance more sales. So far, it seems like New Balance can't make a wrong step, but don't run off, as we'll tell you how New Balance got into trouble for false advertising claims very soon. Number 5. The Numbers Speak for Themselves Heckler decided not to give the sneakers names, but rather model numbers. The numbers would reveal a lot of information about that individual pair of sneakers, like the type of shoe, was it built for speed or stability, and what kind of arch support it offered. You were and are still able to make a purchase decision based on your individual needs. The digits that really put New Balance on the map were the 320s. These were the first New Balance sneakers that showed the N logo and were made from nylon and suede. Runner's World magazine named these sneakers the number one running shoe on the market at this time. 
Not only was New Balance the front runner with the release of this iconic shoe, but their advertising campaign was also forward thinking. People were making purchase decisions to make themselves feel and look better. So instead of using athletes to market the sneaker, they created the Ma and Pa Balance, featuring older, cool, hipster people wearing their trendy sneakers. The campaign was a huge success. Number 6. New Balance released the first sneaker that would fetch $50. In 1980, New Balance released the 620. It was a lightweight running shoe which featured a thick, cushioned heel and a Vibram sole. This was the most advanced sneaker on the market at the time, and despite the exorbitant price tag, sold extremely well. In 1982, their 990 became the first running shoe to sell for $100. It was considered the best running shoe money could buy. And Aluxers, if you love your sneakers, you'll love our video, The Top 10 Most Expensive Sneakers in the World. Number 7. New Balance were up to speed with what the market needed. In 1978, they released their first line of clothing. They introduced nylon and mesh tops, sports and Gore-Tex running suits, and today they have active wear for every sporting discipline. And even if you're not really that into sports, there's active wear that you can buy that will make it look like you are. Hello, athleisure. Number 8. The quality of the shoe drove sales of the product. The brand didn't want to endorse their product through famous people and wanted the quality of their products to shine through. Right up until 1990, they had the mantra of endorsed by no one. Then they decided to let that ideology rest for a bit and gave James Worthy, a Lakers star, a big contract. Worthy, however, was caught with a prostitute, which didn't sit too well with the brand at all, and they went back to their original strategy of endorsed by no one. They kept this going for almost 20 years, until they decided to once again sponsor athletes and sporting teams. Now the brand is connected with football, cricket, basketball, rugby, lacrosse, motocross, tennis, and even music. Number 9. Jim Davis is credited for turning New Balance into a multi-billion dollar company. Jim Davis bought New Balance in 1972. He made the purchase on the day of the Boston Marathon. There was only a staff complement of six people making 20 to 30 pairs of shoes a day. He is still the chairman of New Balance, and his wife Anna is the vice chairman. His family owns 95% of the company. Davis has a net worth of $4.7 billion. He always believed he would go into medicine, having studied biology and chemistry at college. One of his professors commented he had a talent for sales, and so the seed was sown. Rob Demartini was the CEO until 2018, and he was succeeded by Joe Preston. Preston is currently placing a lot of focus on 3D printing in its American factories and plans to invest in people, equipment, and manufacturing plants in the years to come. Number 10. Jim Davis bought New Balance for $100,000 in 1972. And by 2013, the company was worth $2.73 billion. Today, New Balance has roughly 5,500 employees worldwide, with the brand being sold in over 120 countries. The company is now worth over $4.1 billion. Number 11. Steve Jobs loved New Balance. His favorites were the 992s, and he always teamed them up with his signature black polo neck and his blue jeans. If you're also a fan of the iconic gray sneaker, you're in luck, because New Balance have recently announced they'll be relaunching them. The sneaker will be launched in Singapore first and then make its way to other countries. Bill Clinton was also a fan of New Balance and was often spotted running in the 1500 model. Other celebs who sport the brand include Pharrell Williams, Kanye West, Jennifer Garner, Kate Middleton, and Reese Witherspoon. Barack Obama received a customized pair of New Balance sneakers in 2012. The shoes were made before the re-election and New Balance were wanting to remind him of the importance of local industries in America. New Balance can still classify their products as made in America because 70% of their sneakers are made on American soil. Number 12. Customers burnt their New Balance sneakers. When Trump was elected as president of the USA, Matt LeBreton, vice president of New Balance, said things are going to move in the right direction. 
And those comments did not sit well with many New Balance fans who burnt their NB sneakers in protest. The statement was related to the company's stance on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would have created free trade between the USA and many Asian and South American countries, but many took the comment as an overall gesture of support for Trump. Those that burnt their sneakers felt that New Balance were in favor of racism and xenophobia, which in reality goes against everything the brand believes in. Number 13. New Balance had to pay a large settlement for false advertising. New Balance has launched a wide range of footwear, including jumping on the toning shoes bandwagon. Their adverts told potential customers that their newly acquired footwear could activate certain body muscles and that the sneakers would help the wearers burn 8% more calories than other sneakers. This information was considered highly misleading. Three women filed a suit back in 2011 and they each received $5,000 in compensation. Anyone thereafter who joined the class action would receive $100 back from each pair of toning shoes they purchased. Lawyers concluded, quote, Wearing the toning shoes provides no additional activation to the glutes, hamstrings, or calf muscles and does not burn any additional calories. Number 14. New Balance Donated $2 Million to Coronavirus Relief Efforts Despite having to shut many of their stores down around the world as many countries go into lockdown, New Balance is donating a hefty sum to their communities. $200,000 will be given to Global Giving, $100,000 to No Kid Hungry, and the rest distributed to equally good causes. This money is over and above their $7 million they donate as a part of their annual donations to worthy causes. Number 15. Levi Strauss and New Balance Collaborate to Celebrate a Birthday as New Balance as we know it turns 35 in 2020, they're teaming up with Levi Strauss & Co. to release a New Balance sneaker made from denim, brown suede, white stitching, and the small red Levi's tag you'll find on their jeans. They'll come in an equally beautiful box, considered a collector's item, and will cost $200 a pair. Even though stores right now are closed because of COVID-19, you can still shop for your favorite New Balance shoes online. And Aluxers, that's a wrap for today's video. But you know us, we're curious. Are you a New Balance fan? If so, what's your favorite go-to number? We love hearing from you in the comments. And for sticking with us until the end, here's that bonus you're waiting for. When you're on a holiday, it's easy to put off your exercise routine for a myriad of reasons, but New Balance have teamed up with Weston Hotels to ensure that you don't neglect your fitness. The most common excuse for not exercising on holiday is, I can't fit my sneakers into my luggage. However, if you're staying at a Weston Hotels and Resorts, you can rent New Balance sneakers and training gear and purchase your new socks for $5 because ain't nobody got time for athlete's foot on your holiday. They'll also provide you with a running map and an exercise routine that you can do in your hotel room. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.